Hello everybody and welcome! If you ever played Kerbal Space Program, the concept of more boosters to solve problems will be familiar to you. Well, I decided to put a rocket engine into my car, but since I didn't want to handle hypergolic propellant, that only slowed it down by just adding more mass, so we loaded it back out again after driving the engine almost 800 kilometers across Europe. And not just any rocket engine. This motor belongs to none other than Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut. How did it end up in my car? And what does it have to do with SpaceX catching Starship's super heavy booster? I'm going to answer all of that and if you enjoy what I'm going to tell you, please leave a like and comment and if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel for more fun space-related content. Okay, so what are we looking at here? I don't know the exact name of this engine, but what I do know is that it is the second stage engine of a former Soviet surface-to-air missile. It was mainly used for testing and later for training purposes for mechanics. The nozzle is sealed off, so while it appears to have all the bits and pieces attached, it would no longer work. Or at least not without blowing itself up. Which would have been nasty because it used hypergolic propellant, which is a serious health hazard. So how did it end up being the property of Tim Dodd and how did I come to travel with it? A couple of weeks ago there was this cool event in Germany called the Space Creator Day. I went there last year, so did fellow creators Matt Laun, SW Dennis and many others and there was also the announcement for Kerbal Space Program 2's for science update. And a lot of European space companies exhibited there last year, including promising startups like Rocket Factory, Augsburg, ESA, Aerospace and Gatespace. And one of the organizers of that Space Creator Day, or SCD for short, is Florian, who basically lives around the corner from where I am. For a couple of years he was part of Tim's team and during that period Tim had bought this Soviet engine on a whim at an auction house in Austria. Florian is Austrian and so he picked up the engine that Tim paid for and stored it in his basement. Then Russia decided to invade Ukraine and well, let's just say exporting a Soviet rocket engine from Europe to the United States became a lot more complicated. Since it would be a shame to let that engine just collect dust in Florian's basement, he decided to exhibit it at this year's SCD and I volunteered to take the two of them to Speyer where the event takes place. Which by the way houses a real Buran space shuttle. The thing actually flew for atmospheric tests and there's a very complex and fascinating history of how it got to Germany and inside the Technik Museum Speyer. During the event the engine garnered a lot of interest from visitors and exhibitors alike. One of the latter was the exploration company with Philip on stage talking about how they rapidly prototype rocket engines with computational design. It was pretty interesting to listen to and it made me curious what else this company is going to do in the coming years. They already have plans for commercial vehicles to low earth orbit, focusing on delivering cargo to current and future space stations. One of their test articles was actually on board of the first Ariane 6 flight and became space debris instead of uh, performing a controlled re-entry, which it was designed to do initially. Well, that's not a fault of them, that's a fault of Ariane 6's second stage malfunctioning. So yeah, I hope they get another chance in the future. I spoke to Philip a little during the event. He really wanted to look inside the Soviet engine's nozzle to maybe learn something new and was sad to learn that the nozzle was sealed shut. A true enthusiast of his profession. And yes, after all that excitement, we put the engine back into my car and we rolled all the way back to Austria. Here is where the SpaceX booster catch I mentioned in the beginning comes into play. Because Starship's fifth test flight happened while we were still on the road, so we pulled over and watched it on the infotainment screen of the car. Two space fans freaking out about a rocket test while having a real rocket engine in the trunk. I don't think it can get any nerdier than that. People are gonna think we're crazy. <laughs> I don't care. This year, the Space Creator Day was a lot smaller. Maybe because Everyday Astronaut wasn't there, or maybe because there was no involvement with the famous video game franchise. I don't really know. But the heart of it, meeting space enthusiasts from around the world, was very much beating strong, and I hope to go there again in the future. 
If you remember, I wanted to become an astronaut for ESA a while back. And fail, of course. But the German space agency DLR brought basically a virtual rocket to the SCD to take a ride in. Their Space Buzz transports nine passengers in virtual reality on an orbital flight across the Earth and around the Moon. It's aimed more at school children than people who already know quite a bit about spaceflight, but it was still a nice experience and free for visitors of the event. The highlight for me was a deep dive tour of Buran. Max from the Energia Buran archive, who has access to a lot of original sources, explained many of the fascinating details of the vehicle to us during our visit. If you don't already, give that guy a follow on everywhere he is. I thought I already knew a lot about Buran, but Max had so much detailed knowledge on tap that I felt like on my first day in school. And I loved every second of the tour he gave us. Thanks so much for your time, Max. Thanks also to all of my patrons and my YouTube members. I really appreciate all of your support and if you haven't joined up on Patreon or a YouTube membership already, please look at the links below and the tiers that are available. If you choose one of the higher ones, your name will show up here with all of these other wonderful people. And thanks to everyone that came to say hello during the Space Creator Day. I loved all the many little chats we had and I hope we get to meet up again in the future. Maybe next time Tim will come as well and finally pick up his engine so I don't have to drive it across Europe again. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.